Hello, my name is Mike Kissenberth, an orthopedic surgeon with the Stebbin Hawkins Clinic of the Carolinas. I'd like to talk to you about rotator cuff disease and rotator cuff tears. All too common, this is something I see as a very busy shoulder surgeon in our practice here. The rotator cuff are muscles that really originate from the back of the shoulder and go up onto the ball and socket. So here's your ball and socket shoulder and the rotator cuff tendons hook on right here. A common problem we see early on is impingement or bursitis where the shoulder tries to go up and impinges against the undersurface of the acromion. This is what we call an impingement syndrome. Occasionally, you may, we may see a rotator cuff tear that develops slowly over time or through a small injury or often can happen from a traumatic injury where the rotator cuff can tear acutely. More often than not, the patients will come into the office with the, a similar complaint of shoulder pain, particularly with overhead activities, potentially a pop, and often feel a sense of weakness or a loss of power in their shoulder. They will most often complain with pain at night and a dramatic inability to lie on that affected shoulder. With those complaints and appropriate history, the next part is a good examination of your shoulder so that we can assess the strength. In order to do that, often the shoulder is so sore that we have to perform a diagnostic injection. The purpose of the injection is often a local mixture as well as a corticosteroid or a steroid mixture that's put in to bathe the area around the rotator cuff. And when doing that, we can then come back and re-examine the shoulder. When we re-examine the shoulder, we'll not only, see, we'll not only see if their motion's better, but also if their strength is intact. It is very difficult and often impossible to assess the integrity of the rotator cuff if it's painful. So that's one of the things that will often be done in the office during your workup. And our goal in the office is to get a diagnosis. In addition to a, a formal history and examination, which will cover various tests to, to assess not only the rotator cuff, but also, also the biceps tendon, the surrounding joints, because they're often involved in this process of rotator cuff tears and their pathology of conditions that we see around the shoulder. Um, always we will we'll get three x-rays of your shoulder to look at the bony anatomy. We will often get an MRI and the purpose of the MRI is that it shows the soft tissues to include the rotator cuff, um, its quality. The problem we see with rotator cuffs is often the tears may be long standing. So we do know in our literature that small tears or full thickness tears that are small heal reliably but the larger the tear the more progression sometimes our difficulty in getting that tendon to heal back to bone where it comes from. Our primary treatment in shoulder pathology to include impingement and rotator cuff tears is to begin with physical therapy. The only reason we may go right into a surgical solution is if somebody has an acute fall and acutely ruptures the rotator cuff. So physical therapy is our mainstay and often we're quite successful in getting people back to the previous level of activity. The ability to lift above their head and their shoulder without hurting and being able to sleep better at night. If at, if at your follow-up examination you're found to have a rotator cuff tear, it's full thickness and it is not responding to conservative management, uh, we will then discuss with you operative management. Most times we will perform an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair and it's important that you understand what that is. It often can be performed in an outpatient setting. Sometimes you will need to be admitted overnight for a 23-hour observation or stay. That depends on your overall health and, and sometimes a preference on the patient. At surgery, we perform an arthroscopic procedure either in the sitting position or lying on your side. And after you've been sterilely prepped and draped, we will make a little incision over the back of your shoulder and begin an inspection. Part of the arthroscopic approach is to do a thorough inspection of the entire ball and socket joint and after that's done and addressing anything that may be torn because that is our job at surgery to see if there's anything else wrong to include the biceps tendon which is often removed or reattached outside of the shoulder we then move on to the rotator cuff. Now once again the rotator cuff are a series of muscles over the top of the shoulder and they're often pulled off. The goal of surgery is to put them back where they belong but to do it in a tension free environment to promote good healing. I have an example here of an anchor which you will see in the video clips as well. And an anchor is simply a small device that is put in through the small portals. And I don't know if you're able to see this here,
but it's a small device either made out of plastic or metal or sometimes an absorbable material. Attached to it is suture material and this is what we use to repair your tissues back to bone. So once that is done, we begin the rehab phase of rotator cuff surgery and that is perhaps sometimes the hardest. Once again, our goal at surgery is to put the tissues back where they belong and then following that you will be in a sling, often have an ice wrap over your shoulder. You will be sent to therapy the next day to do a dressing change and make sure everything is okay. And then we will begin the rehab process. Overall healing time for rotator cuff repairs takes several months. Often return back to full activity such as golf and tennis may take four to six months. Sometimes sooner based on the size of the tear and how well you're doing with rehab. Often a sling will be required for six weeks post-operatively. You will obviously come out of the sling every day and the purpose of physical therapy the next day is to show you a rehab protocol and begin the process. The results following rotator cuff repair are quite good if the tears are small. The larger the tears, the less predictable the results following surgery. So our goals in the office is to understand and diagnose what you have, the severity of the disease, and then offer you appropriate treatment, uh, an appropriate treatment algorithm.